Welcome back to Arcade Adventures. Jesus, that voice. Let's uh, take it down a notch. Today, we're going to be looking at a side-scrolling beat-em-up made by Atari released back in 1992 called Guardians of the Hood. We've once again found a game with a fantastic story, and instead of giving you the short bits and bobs, I'm going to let the game do the explaining of exactly what's going on here. That's, oh my god, 90s cheese. Oh, gotta love it, man. That is, mm, that's some Gouda right there. It's absolutely beautiful. That story is fantastic. Not to mention those graphics, because digitized sprites, mm, 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 you gotta love them. Now, this game came out two years after Pit Fighter, which is... Why, I guess, we're going with the digitized sprites, because Pit Fighter, back in the day... In 1990, it was actually a really beloved game. I don't know why, but we'll take a look at that game some other time. Right now, let's focus on the hood. So right off the bat, let's go with visuals. The background, everything, the stage looks pretty nice. The characters, ah, I don't know. I mean, that intro was one thing, although... Like, oh, all that gym work, oh, beautiful. I mean, Chief, oh, man, straight out of the WWF. But once you get into the game, number one, why is Chief walking all hunched over? I mean, does, does he have a bad back? Does he need one of those powerlifting belts that Hulk Hogan would be wearing or is wearing? And the enemies, I guess you're fighting the dreads? I, I don't even know. I mean... There's also a homeless guy in the back, which is beautiful. I absolutely love that Chief uses all kinds of different wrestling moves, especially the double lariat, which I've never seen any wrestler do in real life. But in any video game, if a guy does wrestling moves, he's he's got to have the double lariat. It's it's code. Hagar has it. Sangief has it. Fucking Frank West from Dead Rising has it. <laughs> it's not even a wrestler. He's a photographer. Now, you'll quickly find out that you can pretty much beat up everything that you can see on the screen. And the more you beat it up, uh, the more points you get. Granted, it's only five points, but I guess you can beat the shit out of this light bulb without mercy. And then all of a sudden, what the shit just happened? I honestly don't know what I'm more surprised of. The fact that you can beat on the hobo, or that that guy just picked that hobo up and threw him at us. That is wonderful. I mean, do I even have to go on? This video game gets a 10 out of 10. Best ever. We're done here. But seriously, the fact that you can throw a hobo... <laughs> that's... Fantastic. You even get points when you punch the hobo. <laughs> oh my god, Atari. What are you doing? Now, while punching hobos might be fun, Punching ladies of the night will actually get you a beating, so maybe not do that. Hobos, okay. Prostitutes, not so much. So as you may notice, of course the characters are digitized sprites, but also some of the background is digitized. The tattoo parlor looks a little bit too photorealistic to actually be sprite work. So I'm guessing they just went out and decided to, you know, take a lot of pictures of stores and whatnot and then use that for the game, which... I mean, kudos, if that's what you want to do. Uh, at least I feel that works best with the digitized characters. It doesn't feel out of place at all. I think if they would have done the sprite work by hand, it might have clashed with the digitized characters. So yeah, that's actually a good decision. Now, looking at the character movements, uh, it's actually pretty fluid. I can't complain. I mean, it looks a bit weird when they walk because it's they're obviously walking on the spot. 
But other than that, when they do their kicks and their punches, it looks really good. For the time, I mean, you can't complain. 1992, yeah, it, it's good enough. It's great. I'd say the visuals getting all around seven points. I'm going to deduct a few points because I'm not really a big fan of digitized sprites, but whatever, you know, it's fine. Seven points. Nothing stands out too much, so there you go. What the fuck, suddenly Mr. Miyagi shows up and I'm in the gym fighting my own bro? What? Why? What? What kind of... This makes no sense. I'll allow it. Oh, Jesus Christ, the drive-by? Man, raising the stakes, Guardians of the Hood. Alright, let's talk audio right here. So the first vibe I get from the music, it, it kind of reminds me of Sega Genesis music. Not the good kind, though. Sega Genesis always had this rockin' ability. It, just metal music sounded so much better because of its clangy and tinny sound, but this game, ah, I, I don't know, it's just not doing it for me. There's not enough hood music, man. I'm, I'm, I'm I need some kind of rap hip-hop beat. This is, I don't know, it sounds like farts. And honestly, the sound effects aren't really doing it for me either. They're very standard. The digitized voices are at least good, but all in all, the punching, the kicking, and also the bonus sound, uh, it's very its very standard beat-em-up arcade-ish. There's nothing that stands out. Not even one of the digitized voices says anything that's, like, memorable, so it's kind of a letdown. All in all, I'd say the music... I'll give it a six. I mean, let's be generous. The digitized voices are actually really good, especially for 92. So, yeah, bonus point on that. Now, there's a pattern emerging. I don't know if you've already noticed, but we're in the gym again, and you actually have to do this after every stage. It's... <sighs> You don't, you don't learn anything new about the game, he just says stuff like, Use your magic, which I didn't even know we had. But you don't learn anything, and if you lose, you actually lose the game. You have to throw in another quarter, or get another continue going, which is... I don't even understand. It's... it blows my mind. And then it even says, The winner continues for free. What does that mean? Wait, I guess that's for two player that, you know, if the if the second player loses, he has to pay to play again, which it's, it's, it's so dumb. Why would you do this? It's oh my god. And also, how how would it work if you play with three people because this game does allow three people on the arcade at once. There's also a two player version, but my point is if you play with to your friends and you kick their ass, they both need to pay money to keep playing with you? That's just... That's... That's so dumb! That makes no sense! Guardians of the Hood, what are you doing? Now before I get into the learning curve, I need to give this game big props. Because this is another one of those games, like Big Fight, where if you defeat a boss, you actually get to play as them, which is crazy. I love that. More side-scrolling beat-em-ups need to do that. That is just such a cool feature in a game. Ah, it's great. I love it, man. I mean, the characters you get to unlock are just as dopey as the ones you can select, but, you know, they, they got their features, which makes them unique, I guess. Yeah, they're definitely not as unique as all the characters you can unlock in Big Fight, but hey man, at least you can unlock characters. So, big win on that. But let's get into the learning curve. So I have no idea how to play this game. There's a bunch of stuff you can do that I <laughs> didn't even know of at the beginning of the game. You can do grapples, throws, wrestling moves, which... I'm playing the wrestler and I don't know how to do a wrestling move, that really frustrates me. But you can also do, like, projectiles, like Hadoukens. I didn't even know this because the game never shows you up until you get to the second boss fight and he threw one out and then I was like, oh my god, so it took me half the game to figure out how to do it. 
but let me give you a rundown. For this game, there are five buttons you can use. You have your typical eight-way joystick, you have two punches, strong and speedy, and two kicks, also strong and speedy. The fifth button is a defense button, which, like always, I don't care for, so I don't use it because it's pointless. But you actually have to use it <laughs> because you have to hold a defense button and then hold down and a punch or kick button to pick up items, which is the weirdest, most cumbersome way to make that happen. And it just feels super unnatural, but I mean, I guess uh, it's stupid. Now to do the projectiles, what you need to do is you need to hit back, front, and attack. The thing is, this works whenever it wants to. Now to do a projectile attack, you need to have a star in your status bar, which you can see above your score. The more stars you have, the more projectiles you can throw. Once all the stars are gone, you cannot throw any projectiles anymore. You get stars by reaching a certain score number. I have no idea which one, but there you go. You'll be notified by this sound, which will always tell you that you are ready for another special attack. Now, the special attacks just feel awkward to pull off. There's a lot of times where I think I'm doing the combination right, but it's still not happening. I, I don't know, it just it just feels awkward. Again, I was never the kind of person who would play fighting games with an arcade stick, so maybe that's why it just feels awkward. But, man, I tried. It's back, forward, and kick. It's not that hard, but oh my god. It was just the worst to pull off sometimes. Does magic even come in handy? Oh my god, yes it does. Depending on which characters you play, they can actually stun enemies, which will allow you to get some extra hits in which is awesome, while others, you know, their projectiles do more damage, but you can't get any extra hits in, so it depends on who you want to play. If you want to play Chief, he does like a Hulk smash ultrasonic wave that stuns people, or if you play JJ, he does a Hadouken, which stuns people for a little bit, and you can get some extra hits in. It's great, when it works, that is. But everything else, how to do throws, how to pick people up, because I see enemies picking me up from the ground and punching me like crazy, and I have no idea how to do any of this. I guess you also have to hold the block button again, hit up or down, and do some kind of input. It just feels awkward and clunky and weird. I just keep mashing the button and hoping to do a kick. Which reminds me, you can do special moves, not the Hadouken kind, but if you hit kick and punch, both speedy and both strong together, then you actually do like a roundhouse or some kind of move that you would actually think is going to deduct a little bit of life when it hits, but it doesn't. These moves can be kind of useful, but also kind of not because their range is crap. And it really depends on who you play, as Tanya has this really cool, like, roundhouse, scissors, jump, fly, kick, I don't know what to call it. But then Connor has a leg sweep which you think the range would be great, but it's really not, it's crap. And I just now noticed that I merged controls and learning curves into one, which is not something I wanted to do, but it happened and I don't feel like re-recording everything. So here we go, a little bit more about the learning curve. Especially on level five, shit gets real. You have 100 seconds to complete the first stage, which is almost impossible because enemies are super tough, they have a lot of HP, and because I don't know how to do any of the cool pick em up and throw em and whatnot moves, it just, it just takes forever. I tried this stage multiple times, at least 5 to 10, and my god, I don't, not dying, that's not a problem which also happens, but the time, as soon as the timer runs out, you have to restart the whole stage, which is a pain in the ass. This can also happen in boss fights. So the smartest thing that you can do, really, is when you see your time counting down, is let yourself get killed as quickly as possible. Every time you respawn afterwards, the timer then gets an extra 20 to 30 seconds added on top of whatever the time is when you died, which really helps in boss fights because later on boss fights just take forever, it's crazy. 
I mean, they, they can take 10 minutes, especially the final boss. But first, I'm gonna give the controls and the learning curve some ratings. So here we go. Controls, dig it about a 7. There's some cool things you can probably do that I didn't figure out, but they're simple enough, I'd say. The learning curve, however, gets a 5 because I do not know how to figure them out. It took me a while to figure out most moves, so, you know. If, if I wouldn't have even figured out how to do projectiles, I probably would have lowered this to a 4 or 3. But since I figured out how to do that, I'll be generous and give it a 5. But how's the enjoyment? Well... Let's talk about the fun things. Beating up hobos. I mean, <laughs> I don't condone it in real life, but in video games, it's fun. Let me punch everything, and I mean, I can punch prostitutes and old ladies walking around with their, I guess, kid? No, that's... with their grandchild? Yeah, I think that's probably what it's supposed to be. Sure, they beat me up and everything, but it's cool that I have the option. Also, when you play the game, you can actually throw this whatever photographer-looking lady? You can throw her around like it's nobody's business. And there's also a flasher who flashes a train when it comes by and you can even beat the shit out of him. Ah, beautiful. Little things like this, you just gotta love them. But sadly, this novelty runs out pretty quick because ugh, the combat is so monotonous. I mean, sure, side-scrolling beat-em-ups are all kind of monotonous in a way, but oh my god, in this one, it's just... Ugh, because Enemies just kick your ass so much, it's ridiculous, while you just have to take it because... I mean, if you figure out how to do the moves, I guess that's great, and then the game might be better, but I didn't, and so I just kept punching and kicking, and uh, it, it got really old real quick. And especially with the boss fights, where the only way I could ever beat this game is if I had a shit ton of money because I spent at least 30 to 50 quarters on this game and oh my god that final boss took forever it is that's unexcusable it's unexcusable how long that took I thought maybe okay she's weaker to certain attacks but no it seemed like no matter what you do she takes the same amount of damage so it's just it's just a gauntlet and, oh my god, it's terrible. And then, you get the best ending ever. At least you do get an ending, so there's that. So, when it's all said and done, I guess my enjoyment ranges anywhere from 4 to 6 points. 6 because you get to beat up hobos, and 4 because it's super repetitive. So, that's Guardians of the Hood. Would I recommend this game? I guess. This is one of those games where you enjoy it because it's so dumb. It's not enjoyable because of the gameplay or anything like that. It's just a novelty about how crazy everything is. It's in, in that regard, it's fun to play and maybe check it out if you want to see some of the crazy stuff happening because I didn't touch upon everything. There's quite a bit. But would I continue this game or give it a game over? Honestly, game over. I beat it once, I'm fine, it took me an hour. I don't want to come back to this game ever again. It's... yeah, it's it's not crazy enough for me to be like, oh, I'm gonna play this again. So yeah, definitely a game over there. Because Guardians of the Hood just ain't no good. Aw, oh, they're teens? Get the fuck out. <laughs>